We are back with another monthly wrap up of some of the weird, bizarre and even scary news to come out of Japan over the last month. So what happened over the last month or so? Let's take a look. Number 1. In quite possibly one of the most relatable pieces of news this month, police received a call on July 4th informing them that a 22 year old man from Numoi City in Hokkaido had been stabbed. It was presumed that the attack was an attempted robbery, but as investigations got underway, it turned out that something far, far stranger was actually afoot. The 22-year-old claimed he was attacked at 6.30 by a knife-wielding maniac who demanded, give me your bag. This thief then slashed the man's hands and face before running away. However, police dug up security footage of the area in question and found… nothing. When they went back to the 22-year-old, he finally admitted that he made it all up. It turned out that the man simply didn't want to go to work, so he fabricated the story and cut himself at home before tossing the knife away in public to add authenticity to his story. All to skip a day of work. Damn. Number 2. In a piece of news that will no doubt seem bizarre to many outside Japan, Say Wado Books recently made waves for organising their books in alphabetical order. Weird, right? Who on earth would do such a thing? Now, in case you can't catch the sarcasm and aren't sure how books tend to be sold in Japan, it's usually done by publisher. You need to know who exactly publishes a book before you can find it. And then you need to go to that section and scan for the book you want. Well, this bookstore decided to do away with that archaic system and instead straight list books by author name. As long as you know the author name, you just have to look for where they'd come up in the Japanese alphabet and bam, there's your book. Truly a novel idea, am I right? As someone who always found their organising system weird and insanely difficult when you wanted to find something, I'm down with this idea. Number 3. A funny bit of news that even made the international news this month, it seemed that some penguins at an aquarium in Hakone took, uh, exception to a change in their diets. With prices rising all over the globe, this particular aquarium has also been feeling the squeeze, and so they switched to a different type of fish for their penguin feed. They switched to plain old mackerel, rather than horse mackerel in order to save some money on rising fish prices. But, well, the penguins were having none of it. Literally. Most penguins simply refused to eat this peasant fish. Rising electricity costs were also hitting the aquarium hard, but rather than raising entry costs, they opted for cheaper fish and turning the lights off at certain times of day to save instead. Much to the penguin chagrin, it seems. When you're used to the good stuff, it's hard to go peasant, I guess. Their loss, I love mackerel. Number 4. In some far more horrifying news, a 37-year-old man strangled an 18-year-old maid cafe worker in Ikebukuro on July 10th. He quickly turned himself in after, and when questioned, he admitted that he thought the girl was his girlfriend and he got angry when he looked at her phone and saw her hanging out with another man. The two first met at a maid cafe event, where the 18 year old was working, and they had only seen each other three times in the year following that. Despite this, the 37 year old was convinced they were dating, and reacted in the most extreme way possible when presented with evidence to the contrary. This case is still ongoing. Number 5. On the morning of July 6th, a 65-year-old man was arrested in Obihiro City, Hokkaido. And what was this man's crime? Well, walking around each and every morning naked. On July 4th, police received a call from a resident in the apartment complex where he was said to walk around each morning in… in nothing but his birthday suit. As they patrolled the area around 4am two days later, they found the man in all his glory. He was arrested for public indecency and, when questioned on his early morning habits that were making nearby residents uncomfortable, he said that it simply gave him a sense of freedom. Indeed. Number 6. 
Houses aren't the only things left abandoned in Japan, and for the last 14 or so months, a now infamous bus was left abandoned on Higashi Ogishima in Kanagawa Prefecture. This bus was first noticed on May 24th last year, when a manager from the park management office noticed that this bus hadn't moved for quite some time. A label on the side indicated the bus was owned by Nippon Kotsu, a Shimane bus company, but they had sold off many of their buses and this one now belonged to a man who lived in Kawasaki City. The city called the man and asked him to remove the bus, but he pulled a no you and insisted it was their job because the bus no longer ran properly. Um, sure. For their part, the city also refused because, well, they didn't own the bus. The man did. Thus, a stalemate began, and the bus sat there for over a year while both sides refused to do anything about it. Of course, being an abandoned bus, it drew all sorts of attention and, over the course of that year, it was badly graffitied and damaged. Fearful that the bus was going to become a dangerous public hazard, the local government finally announced an administrative subrogation on July 22nd basically assuming the legal right to remove the bus and finally got rid of it, bringing a long and odd saga to a rather quiet and yet safe end. But considering that the city is also planning to charge the owner around $10,000 in removal fees and fines, it's hard to say he made the right choice here. Number 7. Last month, we had a bear attacking a family altar before getting kicked in the backside. Well, this month, a wild monkey has been on a rampage throughout Yamaguchi City in Yamaguchi Prefecture. By July 22nd, the monkey, which seemed to be doing a full damage speed run, had injured 29 people in total, including 5 people on one night of terror alone. The monkey initially only attacked young children before gaining the confidence to then take on fully grown men. The elderly weren't spared either. The monkey had been seen by numerous people banging on windows and carrying on like a delinquent that owned the neighbourhood, with his weapon of choice, a daikon. Local police received over 100 reports of this tiny menace, and they feared there may have even been a gang of them at work due to the differences in heights and colours they had received. Even worse, it seemed the monkey, or perhaps monkeys, wasn't actually looking for food. After all, it already had a daikon and waved around menacingly. Instead, it was literally enjoying just beating people up and seeing the humans' reactions to it. What a monster. Now, while monkey attacks aren't exactly rare, they're still not common either. They tend to hang in groups and avoid people, so a curator from the local museum feared that the monkey may have simply lost its pack and was thus acting out. As of recording this video, the monkey is still on the loose and presumably threatening people with vegetables. Officials have authorised use of anaesthesia if the monkey is spotted in public again. Number 8. In some truly strange news that no doubt gave fans all over the world some hope, but I'm not gonna lie, is also really weird, a 47-year-old man married his Oshi, a 20-year-old now former idol. Tomoe Yuki, a former member of an Osaka-based idol group, first met this fan, Mitsuo, in 2020, when she was only 17. Mitsuo travelled to Osaka from Oita each week to watch their shows and was immediately smitten with her. It was, reportedly, Tomoe who made the first move, however, and in her own words, she realised he was someone truly special to her when she looked out into the audience and didn't see him and this made her feel sad. So, she approached him, told him her feelings, and they started dating. Naturally, their age difference is, well, large. As it turns out, both her parents are the same age as her now husband, and fearing they would naturally disapprove, the pair visited them to discuss the relationship. They questioned Mitsuo on whether he had plans to marry their daughter, and Somehow everything got smoothed over because, well, they're now married. There you go. Number 9. 
Now, this one happened a few months ago, but was only just recently reported on. On May 12th, an office worker in Gifu Prefecture returned home from work to find a rather odd sight waiting for him. Somebody else's clothes hanging on his clothesline. He found several pieces of women's underwear hanging next to his own, and he most certainly hadn't put them there, and they didn't belong to anyone in his family. Confused, the man called the police, who then searched security cameras from the area and found the culprit. A 66-year-old man, also from Gifu. They discovered he entered the office worker's property around 8.20 that same morning, and it didn't take long to track the man down and bring him in for questioning. As of publishing this video, no motive has been made public, nor have the police released any other information other than he is cooperating. So why this man decided to hang women's underwear on somebody else's clothesline still remains a mystery. And number 10. Let's end this month with yet another bizarre piece of news. In October last year, a man in Hyogo Prefecture was arrested for violating the Copyright Act by selling adult videos. Now, it wasn't the mere act of selling them that was breaking the law, of course, but rather that this man used an AI program to, well, uncensor the mosaic in existing videos and then sold these versions instead. For obvious reasons, I'm not going to go too deep into this one, but needless to say, in Japan that's highly illegal. At any rate, on June 29th, the man was finally sentenced to two years in prison, suspended for three years, for his little uncensoring spree. He was also fined 2 million yen, despite reportedly making over 11 million yen from the sale of these videos. So uh, perhaps in this case, crime really did pay. And that's just some of the weird, bizarre, terrifying, and also kind of funny news that came out of Japan last month. But what about you guys? Hear of anything odd or terrifying? Weird or funny? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again next time.